everyone, it's Kathy Zilski here. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today I've got another installment of new stamps. Now what? The only web series wherein a middle-aged crafter takes a set of stamps and, you know, does things with them. But today I'm excited to share a project featuring some stamps that are part of Simon Says Stamp stamp timber and these stamps today i only have the stamps they are all kinds of adorable and i thought i'm going to do some painting specifically some watercolor painting so i want to walk you through my process because i'm not very good i have expensive watercolor paints i have an expensive paintbrush and those things don't really matter you can do this with the cheapest brush and the cheapest paints i just decided you know what i'm gonna get out my expensive paints and i'm going to make something simple. Shall we? Hello. I'm in the little circle. Hopefully the fact that my camera is hanging right over my table, I changed the angle of my front facing camera. Well, you know, if it's too annoying, I'm sorry. Just don't look at the face in the circle. And I'm trying again, someday I'm going to have a ceiling mount camera and it's going to be fantastic and high end. And right now I'm in a dining room. So let's let's take a look at the stamps here are the stamps these are called perfect friends and it is a charming little set from my favorite things there are coordinating dies i don't have them so that was what inspired me to create this almost one layer card you'll, you'll it'll make sense soon enough but if you like cats and i know a lot of you do it's super cute kitties with super cute little greetings and i think they're adorable so there's that I have a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I tend to use the smooth side whenever I'm stamping and painting. It just, I, I, the thing that I love about this cardstock, it is the brightest white watercolor paper that I own. Watercolor paper, even the bright white ones tend to be, um, they have like a yellow hue to them. I'm sure someone can tell me in the comments below why that is, because I'm not an expert, but that said, I love the Tim Holtz paper. I've got Versifying Onyx Black because of watercolor. I've got my super overpriced Escoda Versatile brush. Okay, story behind this. When I started card making, I just decided that I was gonna buy what some of my friends had. I don't need them. But I do like this brush. I will add a link below, but I'm just telling you, the sticker shock on these is pretty high. And to be honest with you, I'm really not good enough to own them. But has that ever stopped me before? The other uh, piece that I'm gonna use today is this detailed ringlet plate, just to create some texture for my simple card project. There will be two layers total, maybe there's three, but you'll see as we get into it, how it all works. So. That is that. Oh, and then I should probably show you this. These are my Mission watercolors. And here's the thing. So I have this set. <laughs> I bought it because who, who has this set? Oh yeah, Christina Warner. And it really is a cool set of colors. I've sort of made a mess out of it, which I think you're supposed to. Uh, hard to say if I'm doing it right or doing it wrong, but I will tell you this. I do have, and I will put a link up in the corner I have a little printable that you can print onto watercolor paper to create your own little swatch cards that are sized, well, that's not the way they go, they go like this, mm, that are sized to fit right in here. It is a cool set of colors. Every time I do use this, as opposed to some of my other watercolors, I say to myself, you know what, Kath, you should do this more often. So they're a great set. I'm sure it will last forever. They're little tubes and you fill it in. And again, is it more than I need? Okay. Okay. So these are the paints that I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to set those aside for now because the first thing we have to do is stamp out my kitty. <laughs> it's again, oh, and there is actually a little more stuff that I'm using. I forgot. I got a little gold embossing powder and a little uh, embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp. I think that's about it. All right. So next, let's get to stamping. All right. I'm using my mini Misty here, my Hero Arts mini Misty, just because it fits in the camera. And all these kitties, they're so cute, right? And I thought about fussy cutting, but then I thought, you know, I just, I want to try to do a little watercoloring, a little painting of a critter and keep it very, very simple. So here's the thing. I'm just going to put this cutie, you know, 
like right in the center. I am going to die cut this panel once it's done and that will come in that will come into play later especially because I am going to do a little bit of stamping and embossing but let's start with Kitty. Picking that up and lifting this up. All right repositioning good to go. I'm going to use the VersaFine Onyx Black because oh I'm looking <laughs> because I changed my camera I didn't know where to look. I see you in there. Um, I'm going to use this because you can watercolor with it. So there's that. All right. Let's go like this. Just going to ink up my little image. Like that. Pick up and press. Let's see. I might only need to do it once. You know, if you're doing this on a more textured, toothy side of any watercolor paper, you would need to be mindful of how much you stamp it. Oh gosh, that looks really good. Maybe a light tap. Maybe just like a light tap. Don't squish it down too hard just to get a little more over there. How's that? I think, well, oh, let's not. I think that looks really good. All right, so closing you up, grabbing my cleaner here. Oh, and I'll just wipe that off. Clean my stamp. And again, taking my chamois and just popping it into my little salt cellar that I hold things in, or not things, just this thing. I love that thing. Oh, it's kind of sticky. So I'm not gonna tape this down or anything, but sometimes I do like to bring in my little cutting board. It's just, you can get a hard board. I just, this is like a, well, I used to cook on it. I don't cook on it now. I've got two jars of water that are gonna be just behind my, my circular face. And I gotta make sure that I have room to do everything because I also need I always need a little paper towel um, it, because I need to be doing some dabbing and not, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about dabbing off of, uh, you know, paint. That was pretty funny though. No dabbing. <laughs> I amuse myself. Okay, opening up the colors and I'm not going to keep these cards in place because I don't need them. But I am going to just go like this because here's the thing. I, I kind of know the direction that I want to go in with this. Um, I have mixed some colors. I am going to play with a few things. But when I watercolor, it needs to be very simple because if it is not simple, I'm going to mess it up. And it's that, it's that thing again of trying to write a creative check that my body can't cash. It just, I'm not quite there yet. So let's see here. I'm gonna bring a zoom in just a tiny bit so you can see this. All right, look at that. That's pretty good, right? All right, my stomach just growled. Hopefully that wasn't picked up on camera. I am gonna start by just painting my cat's body brown. So I try to remember to do the clean water, dirty water thing, like one is clean, one is dirty. Apparently people do that. I also have a little thing that I wanna show you. Where is it? <laughs> I call this a pipette, but I think it's actually a pipette. And what you can do is you can just, you know, pick up a little bit of water here and then you can activate uh, what you're trying to activate. Now, which one? This is where the chart does come in handy for me because then I can remember, oh yeah, I'm doing that color. Okay, but the little, the little pipette or pipette can just activate your color and you're good to go. I might have to get quiet because I, I, I don't wanna mess this up. And if I mess it up, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna work through it. Here's the thing, some people, and I better change the glasses. Also, little note on the side, I do have a new prescription. These are actually progressives. It's just an outdated <laughs> prescription. I've had people concerned, like, Kathy, you need a new prescription. I have it, it's, it's sitting in a pile over my shoulder. I just have to pick out some new glasses. That said, some people like to lay down the water first in, in the space they're painting. And I suppose I could do that because what does that do? Well, I guess it kind of, keeps your paint uh, where the water is. Now, you know, because this is gonna be so simple, I don't know if that's really important to do, but let's get some water. Let's get our little brown that we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna, it's kind of off to, off to the side here. I actually did add a little bit of white to the brown to try to create something. And then what I'm gonna do is dab, see, see that? I'm just gonna dab a little off because, um, I think it just gets too dark. Dab off. Okay, start here at the bottom, dabbing off. Because I want it to I want it to get lighter, you know? I want it to come up and be a little lighter. Oh, look at that. 
Christina Warner would be so proud of me right now. A little bit in, like that. The thing that I do like, and I will tell you, this is a number two brush. Now, the question about this uh, fancy brush that I have, I've heard that this particular brush, which is synthetic hair, I don't think it's, it's not animal hair, it does hold the water very nicely. So you're gonna have that nice little bit of time to pick things up. And uh, I don't use it very often. To be honest with you, I use my cheap little number two brush from Royal Langnickel, and that actually, you know what, it works fine. But I thought for this uh, that I should try to do something with what I have spent. Now it looks like I got a little bit off to the side here. Can you see that? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some clean water. I'm gonna go like that. And then I'm just gonna come in here and see if I can pick it up. Did I pick it up? Well, you know what? There you go. Imperfect, but we're gonna keep on going. All right. I'm gonna come in here, add more water. See, this is where I get sort of panicky because I think, oh, did I just ruin it all? And the answer is no, you didn't. But I do think, oh my goodness, I think watercolor is an art form. I watch people do it. Christina, pri primarily, <laughs> let's, let's be real, I watch her. I, um, I'm honored to be friends with her because she's a, she's a lovely person. She's funny and she's generous and kind and, and, and she's also an incredibly talented designer not just a card maker. I mean, my goodness, this girl can make uh, the stamp and die sets that are just so adorable. But I watch what she does and it, it does seem effortless. And then I start doing it and I'm like, what, <laughs> what is happening? Why isn't this working? Like what, 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 Christina, but you know what? It's fine. Going very slow. Also, I realized that I have a strange grip on my brush. I also have a very strange grip on my pen. Um, when I was a child in elementary school, I held my pen funny. I think, and I could be wrong, I think it's because my father held, holds his pen funny. Now he was, um, he grew up in a time where if you were left-handed, they tried to get you to write with your right hand in school, as in they wouldn't tolerate, they wouldn't tolerate, oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. They wouldn't tolerate, um, they wouldn't tolerate it. So I think I might have watched him uh, with his brush. Oh, and I did get a little in the written. Okay, I need to I need to focus. But so I've always held my uh, pen like a almost like a lefty might, but I don't I don't know any other way. And so uh, there you go. That, that's what you get. I'm just putting little rings on the tail. I wanted it to be a little darker such tiny touches and I can't talk while I do this but actually I think it should get darker as we go up always don't be afraid to do the dab off I always keep that paper towel because I don't want to get too much color and too much water yeah you know what I think that could all go darker so let's go Oh gosh, I started clucking. Do you make sounds when you create? Uh, years ago, I worked <clears throat> for a company called the Science Museum of Minnesota. And uh, I worked with these wonderful, wonderful graphic designers. Oh my gosh, they were so good. Jeff and Lawrence. I learned so much from them about design. and uh, But we all had a habit of clucking. So we'd be around, we worked in this big old, gosh, old building, a couple hundred, I don't even know how old the building was. We were not part of the actual museum. We worked in a remote location across the street. And we all had this habit when we were at the table pitching, whatever it was we were working on, we clucked. And I got into this habit for years. I finally have broke the habit, but sometimes I still find myself clucking. And I think there's, you know, there's something to it. I mean, it definitely, uh, definitely adds to the uh, excitement. All right, I'm gonna add my little brown face up here. Here's the other thing too. I'm not doing anything heroic here. I'm not gonna try to, you know, 
add in color that doesn't belong or even if it did belong how would I know you know watercolor isn't really my area of of expertise but I will tell you something that I do like about it I like the look right I like how when it dries it's imperfect and you know you can see the where the water pooled or whatever I mean I don't know if that's what you're supposed to have happen but I I enjoy that I think that actually looks pretty cool Let's get a oh you know what I don't have that I do that I usually keep um, a little piece of cardstock so that I can um, oh wow yeah 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 let's let's move that around a little so that I can dab off a little and that's nice I wanted to have a little shadowing so I guess you're gonna get it whether you uh, whether you wanted it or not Kath all right I can't hear my stomach probably should have eaten before doing this but you know what live and learn all right I think that's cute well you know it's nice though being with the camera and I'm sorry my husband is uh he's in his class <laughs> he's in his classroom today and he's texting me so I just had to pause and basically say honey don't don't text me anymore because it's going to show up because I forgot to turn off notifications there we go I like on the camera I can actually see where I probably need a little more color and I think that kitty looks great. Okay, so I'm going to take a slightly darker color, and this is where I bring out my chart again. Sepia. Yeah, I think I want some sepia. I'll just dab in here and bring this over here like this. I'm going to activate that a little. Another thing, and maybe some of you more experienced um, painters can tell me, like, do you ever clean your palette, or just do you just kind of let it go? And I don't know if that if that is a is that an accurate kind of question like are you supposed to clean it cuz I I don't know. I I feel like I run out of space and then what do I do? You know, do I do I clean it or I don't know. But then I realize if I've been working on a project those colors, oop, get out of there. Don't mess it up. I love that you can also pick up your paint if you have too much in there. I got to turn it this way because I just went out of the lines and that's okay. It's going to be fine, but I need to, uh, there we go. And that's okay. Again, I am no Picasso, but I do think this is cute. So let's keep going. But you can see how having a tiny brush definitely helps because I can barely see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, it's probably okay. I do know that when I get new glasses, my life will change for the better. So that's gonna happen. <laughs> I forgot to do something. I gotta do with the ears. I also like that you can go over an area again, you know, and just sort of, you know, you can add a little more darkness to it. He looks great. Yeah, that's very cute. All right. Oh, you know what though? Again, I, I'm, I'm seeing things that I'm not quite, I'm not really sure and part of it, friends, is that my glasses are terrible. And I look up on camera and I see, oh, you need paint there. Okay. But again, it is all about handmade imperfection. That's the story I'm going with. All right. Now, I want to put some color in his chest. I don't want it to be, let's see, let me get my card out here. I mean, I think it would be nice if it was... Maybe, maybe burnt sienna. I'm going to pick up a little burnt sienna. And I'm going to drop it down maybe right there. Ooh, that's pretty dark. Let's just get my dirty water. See, this is where I do, uh, I brought in a little scrap up here so I can just see. What does that look like? Oh, that looks terrible. Um, where is that burnt sienna? Let's, let's darken that up a little. Now, I shouldn't really, I don't, this is where I feel like I ran out of room on my palette. So I'm actually going to pick up some white off camera. You can hear it. <laughs> and I'm going to come in here. And I think that would work, right? Is that nice? I mean, it's not, it's not bad. Let's try it. Let's just try to bring that in here just a little bit. Just to have, you know, this is a little chest. It's a little color, light and pretty, nothing, nothing, nothing too fancy. And maybe 
a little darker at the bottom. Like that. And then sort of blend it up. That's kind of cute. All right. That's his chest. Yeah. And I want to go more with a tan color for his little face circle. So I think, again, I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to bring it in to my little brown there. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. This is another area where that I find fascinating, and that is color mixing. I mean, I, you know, I do I know enough about color theory to be d dangerous? I do. I mean, I can talk about a color wheel. Actually, I'm going to get some clean color on there because I think that looks bad. That's actually looking kind of milky, but I think that might be what I want. Um, let's see. Is that light enough? Yeah, I think that's light enough. I kind of just wanted it to be a nice light tannish color. So dabbing off because I want his nose to be pink and his ears to be pink. So we're going to come in here with just this little light color. It actually looks almost exactly like the background of his face. So maybe that was kind of pointless. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to dab that up. I don't like it. I think, I think I want to make it pinker. All right, live and learn. I think I do need to clean my palette eventually because right now I can barely see what I'm doing in here. All right, let's see, how's that? Is that even, uh, a little bit pinker. All right, I know it's fascinating, but I, I, I just want it to be, how's that? What does that look like? Actually, that's pretty cute. Let's just take in a little lightness and just add a little pink to his face, like that. Super basic. I did just get some on his, okay, let's pick it up. That's the beauty of watercolor. If you mess up, you can dab it up if you're quick and it will dab up. Now, now I'm gonna go darker with the pink. Okay, so I'm going to come in here with his ears, and then I also forgot I have to do the rest of the tail like that. Like that. That's pretty cute. And hot, hotter pink, or not hotter, but also right there in his nose. Okay, that's pretty cute. That is pretty cute. And then I'm also going to Water it down a little bit more. Come over here and I'm just gonna give him rosy cheeks. And when that dries down, that'll look super cute. Oh yeah, okay. Last thing I gotta do is go a little darker here for um, the other bands in his tail that I forgot to do while I was doing all that. I'm getting a little carried away. Have I talked to you about my love of ASMR? It's very strange. A friend of mine uh, talked to me about it once and I'm like, you're kidding. I've experienced that sensation since I was a little kid. Uh, so whenever I whisper, I can't help but think I'm trying to create an ASMR channel inadvertently. All right, I am going to just take a deep breath. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill up my coffee mug and then I'm gonna come back to do the base of the card. So, I will be right back. So my little dollops haven't dried yet and I'm tempted to, you know, just take a little bit of paper towel and just lightly tap. I hope I don't ruin this. Oh, wish me luck. That's better. I just wanted them to be dry. Okay, I wanna ground my kitty. And I thought what would be cute is just kind of create a little area behind him um, and uh, in front of him and I've got a pink that I mixed already well it's kind of pink I mean it's you know it, it's pink enough and actually I'm gonna pick up a little more color in there because that is not looking how I want it to look is that better and honestly there's no you know this is this isn't really that scientific um, that looks muddy though I don't want it to be muddy I want it to be lighter let me get some white in there we're going for it, even though that looks purple to me. Does that look purple? Looks a little purple. Uh, 
We're just going to visually imagine a line. We're going to come out. Actually, I want it to be a little higher because I do want it to go slightly behind his tail. just want to go underneath him to create a ground so he has a place to sit and pink will play into my master plan oh I'm gonna go this way now because I am going to use pink cardstock for the card card base that's really that's really my my reasoning here Isn't that cute I know he's upside down but I just needed to kind of visualize where he's going to end up like that. Oh my gosh, I think that looks so cute. No, just kind of, I like the, there we go, there, just a little. Fill that in a little bit more just because. How does that look? Is that good? That's just his little bot, his little, his little grounding. That's it. So I'm going to pull that up a little. See that? There's also a little speck there, and I'm not sure what that is. Um, it might not come off, and that's okay. Actually, I'm going to take a little more water here and just soften this out a little. I hope I don't ruin it by doing this. I don't think I'm going to. Let's kind of soften it a little. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I am going to stop while I'm ahead because I think I'm getting a little... I think I'm messing it up. Okay, we're gonna let it dry completely and then I'm gonna move on to my stamping. Dry, sentiment in place, and I think that looks pretty straight. Um, yeah, we're gonna say that it is. I think thanks for being Mew is very cute. Isn't there like a, is it Hot Fuzz or Reno 911 where there's something where they say Mew? If you know what I'm talking about, it's not coming to me right now, so please, by all means, tell me in the comments what that movie is, because I think it's Hot Fuzz, but I'm looking at this. I think that's straight. Now, you can see also um, the water kind of dried a little wonky, but I think that's okay. It, I think that's okay. It's watercolor, right? I am going to powder this up really well, because I don't want my watercolor area to pick up anything, but I don't think it will, because, you know, it's... It's going to be fine. All right. Got my clear embossing ink. I'm going to ink this up. I'm going to bring this down. Oh, wrong, wrong thing. Not paper towel. And I'm just going to apply nice, even pressure. Not squish it too hard, but not squish it not enough. Because it is, it's still thick cardstock. You know, it's still watercolor paper. Pick it up. And here's where I need my, I try not to touch too much with my fingers. There's my uh, antique gold. This is a really great powder. And every time I start to move into the holidays, especially, I remember how much I love this color. It's gorgeous. Tap. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. Let's make, let that set for a second, okay. And then I'm gonna turn it up. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna grab a brush real quick too. <laughs> Just blowing on that. I think that looks great. I might have gotten a slightly better impression of the thanks than the Mew, but that's all right. We're gonna go with it. Now I'm gonna get my heat tool warmed up. Now I have my little sentiment. Thanks for being Mew. It's cute, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape this into place. Let's get you. I love this, by the way, I got a new mat. And I do love that the USA2 size is right smack dab in the, in the middle. Uh, I think that's very cool. All right, let's take a little tape. And let's make sure, and this is where I can also look up here on camera. Help me center. I just want them to be about the same from top to bottom. I think that's cute, right? So, so simple. Um, and are we straight? Yeah, we're straight enough. Okay, I'm gonna tape this into place right there. Now we're gonna take you, make sure we're straight. 
pop you on and I think I need to flip my plate. Someone told me to do that. I also put it slightly at an angle so that it doesn't go perfectly straight through. I also heard somewhere that was good. You know, I, I don't know if my theories are tested. If someone tells me to do something, I'll try anything once. Okay, let's go through and cut. The nice thing that that does, it also helps to flatten it out a little bit from the embossing. Isn't that cute? Thanks for being new. I have a piece of, let's see here. Simon Says Stamp Cotton Candy Cardstock. Now I need a big piece because I am going to be using the detailed ringlet plate just to create a panel for some texture and some interest. So I don't wanna waste paper, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to waste a little paper here. I'm gonna place it here and I'm going to go ahead and run this through. Got to tell you a true story. I purchased something recently and it hasn't come out of the box yet. And you know what it is? Oh my gosh. I purchased a Gemini Junior. And the reason why I love my Platinum 6, don't get me wrong, I've used this six ways to Sunday and it's fantastic. But there are times where I have some issues with my wrists and I thought I want to give the electronic die cutter a whirl for those times. So let's see here. I'm going to poke this out now. Let's get you out of the way a little bit. And I'll show you how pretty this is. This is just a lovely panel die that cuts with this gorgeous texture. Isn't that cool? It's so simple. It's just, yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. So I've got a piece of the cotton candy. I'm just doing the same color. And this is going to be a top folding card, so I'm going to score this at five and a half. Just like that. Give it a nice little score. I'm going to give that a press with my Teflon bone folder. Like that. And, you know, some people have asked why, while well, my tip is mucked up, it, I, it's a problem. I'll fix it someday by getting a new one. But I have had this bone folder leave shine on darker cardstock. So I never see it on the lighter, but I just, I love the way this thing feels and glides. But here's what we're gonna do. First, we just wanna make sure that I trimmed my card base properly. Let me see that, does that look right? You know what? I'm gonna take just a sliver off of the card base. Where's my paper trimmer? I'm just gonna take a little tiny sliver off because I don't like it to not line up perfectly. And I feel like, and when I'm talking a sliver, I'm talking, I don't even know, let's, let's see if it, Let's see if that even works. I don't even know if that's gonna help. Yeah, that's, oh gosh. I literally just munched the crap out of this card base. Well, let's see, can we, can we salvage it? Oh my God. Okay, let's see. Well, that looks terrible. Let's come in a little more. Hold it down. All right, I think we just salvaged our card base. Lesson to you all. To you all. Sometimes you just gotta live and let live. Okay, I'm gonna take my favorite dot runner. Oh, I hope this doesn't run out. I'm low, I have more. This always seems to happen when I'm um, filming and I think we're gonna be okay. I'm just gonna go around the edges to secure those first and then boop, 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 boop. Give it a nice go, right? And here's what we're gonna do. This is one of my favorite tips. I like to use my card, my, uh, Score buddy, you press in, then you can line up your panel on the edge and quickly align something onto a base. That's only for people who have trouble with that sort of thing. I'm one of those people, but now I have no trouble. Look at that, isn't that great? All right, I need to add some foam tape to the back of my little painted panel, which is what I will do. And I need some scissors. Sometimes my spatial ability is a little off that looks good. I think because to be honest with you, I usually do it in this direction. That's how I do it. Then I know because I'm right-handed. Uh, One time I did that and I cut my card panel and I cried. Well, I didn't really cry, but I think what really happened was I said a few unsavory words. Okay. Now, now I'm just going to make sure we we'll press down here. That panel is on there very nicely. So, what do you think? Do you think you're, are you inspired to paint an image, a critter? You know, I, um, 
if I had had the coordinating dies for this, I don't know if I would have painted. I might have tried something different, but I only received the stamps in advance. And so what I love about this is it does make me um, have to think a little more creatively. And here I'm going to stand up so you get to see my neck and shirt. But this is the best way I know of to make sure that I am centering. Boom. I think that's good. I think it's good. Mm. So that is my finished card project. Thanks for being you. And again, I want to show you the stamp set. There they are right there. Actually, I could put the little, cut the little backer on so you could see all those kitties. Aren't they sweet? Oh, so cute. And I also want to show you one other thing. I want to show you the card that I made first as my sample. So there's, there's card two. But here's card one, because this is a, this is one that I did do before I got started. And the reason I want to show you this is because for me, I actually think it's hard to recreate results. You know, like look at look at how soft that color is there. And this is what happened here. Now, I mean, if I look at this one, I think eh, I think it's a little bit better. But I again, I'm still learning how watercolor works. And I guess the thing that I've learned is. I don't really know, but I, but, but I think they're both really cute. And again, practice is part of the fun. Practice is part of the fun. I mean, at least that's the story I'm going to go with. I'm going to move that camera out of the way. Practice is part of the fun. And hopefully this inspires you to just, you know, try. Stamp something out. Let's change your glasses. Get some new glasses so you can see what you're doing. This is me just trying to expand my horizons. I'm actually really pleased with how they both turned out. I do like the first one any bit better. So hopefully you enjoyed this edition of New Stamps. Now what? All links are going to be below the video and I'm also going to include the link for my other more inexpensive brush, the one that I didn't use today because you don't need the pricey brush that I use. You don't really need the pricey watercolors. But you know, if you, you know who you are, the people who are like, but Kathy, I kind of want to have the best. I hear that. I'm just not necessarily qualified to tell you that it's going to make you a better artist. All right. Thanks everyone. See you next time. You do look pretty good on camera today, girl. You are rocking the middle age. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.